see, it's days like today that, I re that I'm reminded of that scripture that talks about being a fool for the Lord. Okay? And I don't mind that. As a matter of fact, in the, in the men's Bible study, we were talking about that, that when people are filled with so much joy, they're often looked at as being foolish. We, we, we see sober and sedate as being smart and intelligent, but oftentimes we don't think about being connected to God, and that sometimes when you're full of Christ and Jesus so much that you are so joyful, sometimes people see you as foolish. And I don't mind being seen as that kind of fool. I don't know about you, but I, I just don't mind that. And so today, what we're doing is throughout this whole uh, Fun the Sun, um, we are looking at uh, teams that have done things in our community and are doing things. You know, there's teams that are away now. We have Nicaragua and the Chick team come and, and speak. Um, and this morning we're going to celebrate a team uh, that has been going to thrive for a while. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. Because if you look at the scripture that we read this morning, it was about rejoicing and joy and celebrating. And uh, that's a lot about what Thrive is about, but it uh, brings a lot more to us. As a way of reviewing the scripture that we read this morning in Philippians 4, uh, verse 4 through 9, it talks about being full of joy in Christ. As a matter of fact, he thought that it was so important, he said, and I'll say it again, because I think you missed it the first time, is... Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And then he says, let everyone see that you are considerate. So not only are you being joyful, but you're being considerate for others. Because sometimes we get involved in our own joy and we don't see others out there. And then remember the Lord is coming. That's a good thing to always remember. I know that we had a class that was talking about that, remembering uh, that, that the Lord is coming. Looking out to the future as opposed to just being right here. I think it was said that if we're looking at ourselves now, we're distressed. And if we look towards the future, you know, we get hope. And so that was one of the classes that we had this morning. Part of the scripture says, pray. Don't worry about anything. Tell God everything and thank Him. And then you will experience God's peace, which we cannot fathom. And God's peace protects us. And I think that's very interesting about that if we bring all of those things to Him, that God will protect us and uh, give us peace. And then one of my favorite scriptures, it talks about our mind. You know that what you think about becomes your reality. Isn't that true? If you haven't learned that yet, I would say really think about that, which is funny to say think about it, because that's what I'm asking you to do, think about it. So the scripture here says, put it in your mind, fix it in your mind, and think about those things as the New International says that are true, noble, and right. If anything is pure, lovely, or admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. Outline those words. Think about your thoughts. Are they pure, lovely, and admirable? Are they excellent and praiseworthy? Think about those things. Because I can tell you there's many times that if I follow some of my thinking and things that I just said, which I'm sure I did this morning, they weren't pure, lovely, and admirable. So I have to go back and uh, that's where we practice uh, forgiveness and things like that because we don't do that all the time. And then the last part of this ties into something else that we talked about earlier. Putting into practice all that you have learned from the Scripture, which means that we need to be in the Bible. Is that not correct? And going to Bible classes and talking to others and listening to uh, God speak to us. So put into practice what you've uh, heard from the Scriptures. Put into practice what you've seen us teach because of why. And here it is again. And you will have God's peace. So twice he said, pray, and you will get God's peace, and go to the scripture, and you'll get God's peace. So we're talking about Thrive this morning. You're wondering, maybe some of you don't know what Thrive is. Let me tell you a little bit of a history about that. About six years ago, somebody that was in another covenant church came to Jeff and said, uh, I got these four tickets, and we can't use them. Do, do, would you like to use these four tickets? And so... Actually, Cammie went with us the first time, Laurel and I and Jeff, and we went the first time. And uh, I remember that uh, they have some pretty good music that was there. And 
I was uh, standing next to Cammie, but she's standing there, and she really loves good music. I'll tell you that much. I mean, I know you know that, but she loves good music. And as there was, as they were playing some music, I was standing there just enjoying and singing. The next thing I'm looking over here, and she was reminding me, and I probably have this wrong, with something like a Watusi. She was just jumping up and down and enjoying herself, and and every, and I and I didn't even. I was just singing so much that I didn't even notice that. And I looked over there, and there she was, because she was, in, she was enjoying the music. And so that was, I, I enjoyed that enthusiasm, and it made me say, wow, something's got a hold of her, and that's good. So we, about uh, six years ago, we went to the very first Thrive. And um, one of the things that I want to let you know, and it will tie into these scriptures here, because Thrive, well, why are we talking about it? It's just an event, okay? Thrive in itself. If you ever hear anybody say other than this, it's just an activity, it's just an event, it's a tool. It's like money. You can use it for good or bad. It, it's, money is not the end all. Okay? Well, Thrive is an event that we go to where we get a lot of energy. Their, their whole purpose is for leaders to come there. Those of us that are leading, we're usually feeding, right? We're usually taking our bucket and going like this here. You take some of this, and you take some of this, and you take some of this. Um, and very rarely are we getting back, we're saying, you know, give our bucket back. Well, the Thrive Conference is for leaders to go and to get filled. And so it's a time when, when they're getting filled up. But as we'll hear uh, a little bit later, if it's not said, I'll just let you know it's not only for leaders, it's for Christians who want to be filled. And so it's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's just it's a tool, it's a place to be. And that I like to say that it's not... We're not talking about the event Thrive this morning, as it's called. We're talking about going to a place where we learn a little bit about what other people are doing and we become a thriving church. Not that we already aren't, but there's always ideas. You know, Paul said to some of his brothers, let's go over to Ephesus and see what they're doing. Let's go over to Philippi and we'll encourage them and we'll find out what they're doing. So as a church, we are always sharing ideas. And that's what Thrive is really about, seeing, you know, it was very interesting. Uh, the very first Thrive that I went to, I took a class on money. Because they have classes on about, you know, 150 classes or so. There's, there's classes on marriage and children, uh, kids and youth. And so I went to one on money, and I learned that there was a church, and the guy that was teaching the class, that he had just come from the weekend before, where they had baptized 800 people the, the Saturday before. And, you know, I was just like, is that that's still happening nowadays? And he, we were talking about money, but what he was talking about, it, and, and, and he, in his church in South Carolina, their church was 75% of the population. They had them there in their church. Now, if you think about it around here, we probably we have less than 10% that are attending here. But, uh, and that's just a number, that doesn't mean anything. But they had 75%, so and he was just saying that we were baptizing people all the time, and he was talking about his money ministry and how they were taking that ministry into the community, and many of those people that were learning how to manage money in God's way were finding God. Okay? And so you go and you find these ideas about things that you do. We don't just do youth ministry to do youth ministry, it's to, it's to affect lives, is that right? So that's what Thrive is all about. It's about uh, sharing ideas. And so um, what I would like to have do is, there's, we have a few videos to play this morning, so you'll, you'll have to uh, make sure that we get those in the correct order. We tried to work on that, so um, I would know that we've already learned that we're having fun this morning, so. <laughs> the, the first video, please. Yeah.
But if they let something down in the middle of their church, then they play something back and forth. Now, we're not going to do that, but I'm just saying they had some fun with that. Um, now, when we saw that, that the carving of Thrive, was that 20 tons of sand? or Something like that. It was 20 tons of sand that was dropped off there, and that guy carved the, the Thrive in there. So see, there was just a lot of things that, that were going on. We thought about having 20 tons. Oh, I'm just kidding. We're going to have it out there and say fun in the sun. But uh, anyway, so uh, let, me, let me ask you. Those who have gone to Thrive, would you just raise your hands? Okay. So you see that there's some people that are here that have gone to Thrive. And um, okay, go ahead. and now last year we had 20 people that went, which is our largest group. We started off with the four, or maybe three, I don't know. Should we count Jeff? I don't know. But anyway, we'll count Jeff. We'll count Jeff. We'll say there's four. And uh, so now we've grown to 20, and there's been different people. But one of the things that you should notice is if you saw the hands that go up, a lot of people aren't here. Because you know what Thrive does to you? It helps you to get energized for doing work for God. So a lot of people are on, at, away at uh, Nicaragua. Some people are over there doing the, the church. There's a, uh, the kids' church right now because it, it gets you energized for that. So if you're looking for something like that, that's what, that's what happens with Thrive. Uh, people, they just want to get uh, involved in doing so many things that, uh, that they are uh, just involved in saying, I love Jesus and this is why. So what I thought I'd do is to stop a little bit of talking here. Don't clap, please. Um, is I'm going to have a we're going to have four testimonies of people that went uh, and some uh, I wish they all went this past year, but the first two couldn't be here, but they wanted to tell you something so much that they did it on video. So I'm going to have the first one played, um, and this is Dustin. Um, if you don't know her, you probably recognize her, but uh, this is this is Dustin. So Thrive was fabulous. I um, didn't know what to expect and it far exceeded my expectations. The workshops were great, and the spiritual feeling of area, all of it, it was great. It felt like being at home with Christians who were singing when we did that, and it was loud, and I loved it, and the music was beautiful. And the workshops, um, I went to two on personal growth, and it was a good time for me to do that since I was looking at retirement shortly thereafter, and it gave me a definite sense of direction um, and a sense of how you decide whether what you're doing in this retirement is twiddling your thumbs or serving the Lord. And I got a lot of feedback, and I met one on one with the presenter for one of the afternoon for about an hour, from, um, and he kind of guided me in a direction that made me feel like coaching is um, not a selfish thing to do, that it's um, brings people in and um, gave me a sense of direction. So for wherever it is you are, I think it gives, would give anyone a sense of direction. Um, definitely I would recommend it to others. And um, it's not just for leaders, it's for anybody. I'm not a leader and I haven't been a Christian very long and I got a lot out of it. I, it gave me a sense of direction um, spiritually and in a very entertaining and neat way. I think it's important to be able to meet with people outside your own community and being in an auditorium filled with Christian music and everybody is alive and singing and it was great. The um, quality of the workshops was really good and I did a couple of them on marriage and um, they were very direct and had very direct ways of dealing with marriage issues, to improve marriage, to bring God into marriage, and um, they were very good presenters, and um, I got that out of it too. I'm going next year? I'm going next year. I bought my ticket at the end of the first day. It might have been a little hard to understand, but what she was saying is that when she had gone to that, that she had just retired and she didn't know what she was going to do, and so she went there to take it to God, to prayer about what she was going to do, and because, you know, she's a cyclist. Now, I'm sorry I'm going to say this, and, and but you saw her hair and everything. Well, she had just uh, rode 100 miles on a day that was uh, on a bicycle. Uh, it was 103, and she just showed up to do the video, having just rode 100 miles in 103 weather. I don't think my hair would look that good if I did that. So, but anyway, but and, and so she went there asking, what am I going to do in retirement, which I know some of us have questions. She was saying, do I sit around and put my thumbs or 
And she said that on a Monday, she stopped working, and on a Tuesday, she got hired to another job. What she wanted to do, she's now coaching cyclists, and it's a full, it's a, it's a, it's a paying job, and she's, she's doing something she loves. She said, I might enjoy my retirement better than I did my work, so that's pretty cool. And she said, and what she said to me, which wasn't there, she said, I think that because God sent that to me, I'm going to probably have a lot more fun with it also, so... Anyway, so that was one, and then uh, uh, we have Sharon next, so go ahead. Good morning, good Sam, family and friends. This is Sharon Zabel, uh, here to talk to you guys about my Thrive experience. Uh, the one thing that the Lord has put on my heart to share is something that I guess they do at Thrive every year. Uh, they try to find a way to really bless somebody. And this year, they decided to bless somebody lavishly by ordering a pizza. Ordering a pizza might not sound like a big deal, but what they did was they went around and interviewed local pizza pizzerias, uh, managers of the pizzerias, and asked was there a particular pizza delivery person that just kind of stood out. Well, they found this young wife who uh, worked after school with kids and also was caring for her uh, ill father-in-law who since passed away, um, and they decided to do something amazing. And what they did was they set it up with the, uh, with the manager that they were going to order a pizza and have her come out on stage. That they were going to take up an offering to give to her as a tip. Well, there was about 2,400 people there. And um, I forgot who it was, if it was Ray, but they said if everybody just gave a dollar, that'd be a $2,400 tip. That's pretty impressive. The bucket got passed around, and sure enough, we collected $3,500, a $10 Walmart gift card, and a big bag of change of quarters. Well, needless to say, when this unknowing pizza delivery gal comes out, we go to give her her tip and they roll the tip out. She was floored. But more than that, we were so impressed with the love of God that was flowing from heaven through us and onto this one girl. It was something that I will never forget. It since inspired me to look for ways that I can allow God's love to pour through me and other people together. Um, the phrase that really comes to my mind is it was we were it was focused unity. We were all unified in love in the love of Christ and it was focused on one person. And I just that's just in my heart. What would it look like if we can come together as a group of believers, small or large, it doesn't matter, and just allow God's amazing love to pour out on someone else? Now, we're going to go to a clip. You guys are going to get to actually see a part of what I experienced. But the thing is, you had to be there. Because what you don't see is what was felt. And that was heaven opening up and God's love just pouring out on a whole stadium of believers through us and on to one person. You guys have to go next year. Believe me. Let him experience it. Go ahead and play the next video by the way.
We also have a $10 Walmart card. So we'll Thank you so much, Oliver. Yeah. I tell you what, if I'm working at a pizza place and a church orders a pizza, I'm taking it. Um, I can't even hardly watch that anymore without getting a tear in my eye because you had to, I mean, you really had to experience what was going on there. Um, there's, I am not one who easily cries, but I can tell you I've done it more there than anywhere else just because of what happens. Um, I saw a person in Compassion International, which Laurel uh, was there for this, where a guy, you know, you, you could sponsor kids. Well, one of the kids came from uh, Nigeria that was sponsored by somebody in Canada, and they happened to be there. So they put the two together, and the kid broke down on the stage. He was about 20. He uh, broke down on the stage because uh, and all he could do through his sob was say, you don't understand what you've done for me by, by sponsoring me. I would be dead today if you didn't do this because I lived in the slums of Nigeria. And to have the kid, now 20 years old, meet their sponsor was just amazing. I was, I was asking for a roll of paper towels. It was, it, was, uh, it was amazing to see their heart felt. So what I thought, we had two people that were gone, but I have two other people that I want to bring up here. Mary Jean Anderson, uh, and then I'll bring up uh, Jean Fox right after that. So here, let me uh, find this. very pleased to be able to share with you my experience because I really didn't know what to expect. I'd heard over the years about Thrive, but not a whole lot. Um, I think I went because I wanted to visit Bayside Church. I had never seen it, and I'd only heard about it, Mega Church, Covenant Church. Um, and uh, they, they have a services with 12,000 people on Sunday, so I really wanted to go there. And then Jeff said there were a few tickets left, so all of a sudden, Susan Bell and I just decided to, we were going to go, and I am so glad that I did. And I encourage you to do the same, because I've never been in a, a group, I couldn't even call it a group, I mean, you saw the size of it, of, of Christians all worshiping together. That was my first real experience. And there was so much. And Jeff cautioned us, especially the new people who went this time, take as much as you think you can handle and, you know, let the other go. Because there's so much. As they said, there's 150 um, possessions. And so we did. And I took one of personal growth, one of spirituality. And I, I wanted to see what they were teaching about grief, since that's my ministry. And uh, my favorite, I think, was Seasons of the Soul. I was just talking to Bob Rasha about that. Um, a woman talked about our seasons of our soul. At my, my age, and I, I, just, I, just, I just really got it. And it was like our lives are divided, um, our soul is divided into seasons. Um, of fall and winter, which is sadness, and spring of new beginnings. Um, summer of fulfillment, and uh, I, we, they had us all stand up at the different seasons. And I, at that point, I felt like, oh, I'm going into spring. I'm ready for some new things, and I'm ready to capture some new things and do things, some new things. And at 78 years old, you know, that's pretty good. <laughs> anyway, um, so it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. I can't say enough about it. You saw it. I met a lot of different people, um, just sharing it, and the good Sam, all those good Sam people were together, and that was really fun to be with my family, but it to be this something so much bigger than all of us. The sessions were all based, even though they were experts in their field, um, on finance and ministry and uh, every, all over the community. Um, people volunteered their time to come and share their knowledge, but it was all in a Christian perspective. And you know, we don't get that in the world. We go out and we work and we do our thing. We don't get that Christian perspective. So everything we were taught that day, or those days, was from a Christian perspective. 
and how these people, learned people, all different ages, were incorporating their Christian beliefs into their everyday lives and how they were sharing that with us. And it was so refreshing. It was truly refreshing. And I came away, I think, as we say, rejuvenated and ready to take on some new things. So I encourage you to have this experience. Be prepared for loud noise. I mean, it's a lot of singing. It's very loud. But we kind of sat back, so it's OK. And we were, I was in there singing and clapping with the rest of them. Long days, but lots and lots and lots of enjoyment. And uh, came home with a notebook full of, of things to review and uh, you know, help me lead my daily life. So thank you. Let me share. Sunglasses at the last. Uh... I'm a little disappointed. Jack said we were all going to wear them. Yeah, today. I'm the only one here with them. Uh, 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 I have a small brain. I can. Uh, oh, there you go. He's got his own right there. So. about four minutes. Now, those of you that know me know I can't think that fast. So I decided to write things down, do a lot of editing, cutting out a whole bunch of things, because it was so much to take in. I'm not a leader in this church, even though I've been here as one of the original charter members since 1988. I went to Thrive with no expectations because I didn't know what it was but maybe hopes of refreshing or renewing, I was running on empty, and perhaps I'd find some way to serve. They had breakout sessions. Uh, so many it was hard to choose, but I decided to focus on family and youth topics. The most memorable session was about raising Christian adults. The speaker was about, um, was, the speaker uh, we told us about how we do such a great job providing programs for our kids, such as Awanas, Youth Group, uh, Junior High, High School uh, pr programs. But then, what do we do for the kids that are 18 to 30? The young adults, the gap. We, are, we raise them and we send them off to college where the academic world takes their faith from them. It isn't a matter if they will destroy their faith, but only a question of when. So what can we do? And for those of you that have seen the movie, My God's Not Dead, you understand exactly what these kids are facing. If not, if you just listen to the evening news when you have professors that demand they take the finals in the nude, or they're going to fail them. This is happening in our UC system right here in California. There are some simple decisions we can make to help keep this from happening. For instance, send your child to work in a church camp instead of a fast food job. The truth of it is, they work in a fast food job to save up for college, and what do they save? Maybe a hundred bucks? It's better to save their faith. Um, he had some other really important ideas that were like, uh, if we're honest with ourselves, we should be putting our kids where they can grow their faith and share their faith at the most vulnerable times of their lives, that 18 to 20 year old group. He said to send them to Christian colleges first. I thought that was odd because most of us have been trained to think, send them to, a, you know, uh, Delta College or something that doesn't cost too much, then send them off to a university. But what he said made so much sense. He said this will keep them, help them to mature in their faith. And it, so that when they do go to the state colleges, they won't be swayed by the liberal and radical teachings 
of our state school system. To understand better what is going on, please watch the movie, God's Not Dead. The second thing that impressed me was how much we enjoyed just laughing on, on comedy night. Your pastor can really belly laugh, by the way. <laughs> you know, the business of church is pretty serious. Whether you are a deacon, or a pastor, or a youth leader, like Dave, or Paula, or the Williams, then we often forget the joy of being Christian. And that, and that is what we should be conveying to the world. If we have the joy of the Lord, in our hearts. Shouldn't we tell our faces? So I came back with this idea that maybe we could help reach the gap. That 18 to 30 year old young adult through a comedy night here at the church. Maybe every Friday night we could have Christian comedy night for the young people. We have uh, videos. I chose to buy videos at the conference of the Christian comedians, and my family loves them. The teenagers now have both of them memorized and have added to the collection. The, uh, to, to have a, a comedy night would give our kids in this community, not only the ones that are seated here that are our future, but it would be a great outreach program to the kids that aren't going to have the opportunities to know the Lord the way these kids have and probably will never get to go to college. Those kids that are working down at Burger King, Taco Bell, that may be the end of them. That may be where they end up for the rest of their lives. And we go in there with a sour face and they say, God, I'm glad I'm not a Christian. Well, maybe we can change all of that. So my simple idea was that we maybe start a Friday night comedy night here at the church. This could serve our, our great youth, like the Duffy kids who were here. They didn't go away to college. They're here. And I'd like to give a little bit back to them. Um, and it would be a great outreach to the other kids here in the community. Um, I have two CDs to share with uh, the teenagers. I know that most of the people that went to Thrive also got uh, great uh, joy out of laughing and being silly on comedy night and tossing beach balls around and stuff. And by the way, pastors cheat too. Pastors cheat too. You have to ask Pastor Jeff about that. And we can get more. Um, I'm willing to participate in that. I'm willing to help in any way I can. And uh, if the church thinks that's a good idea and a good outreach program, my heart is to keep taking care of these kids, giving them a safe place to go where they can have fun and they can be Christians and enjoy the joy of the Lord. And you see, if somebody didn't mention I was going to say that the laughter that we did at the comedy night was great because next day, those of us that went, we were saying to ourselves, uh, man, our, our sides were still hurting and everything from, our, from laughing so much. So real quickly, because I noticed we're getting short on time here, is that I just wanted you to know that well, what are some of the things that we've done here in our church that have been influenced by Thrive? This Fun in the Sun is one of them. If you notice the board that's out here in the lobby that... Uh, Pam and Laurel did so much uh, work on. That came from that, uh, that whole idea. We're doing a hope study this year, and that came from going to Thrive. The Serve Day, if you don't know what Blit is, where you can make electronic payments, you know, do your, do your uh, not payments, but, uh, you know, uh, tithing. There you go. I, was gonna, I couldn't think of the word. I got payments. And, there, and then there's so many things that have happened as far as... Uh, People come in on Sunday morning and pray for the chairs, okay? That's something that uh, has happened. And, and uh, we have uh, lots of ideas that come from those classes that we go to have turned into Bible studies. So there's just so many things that have happened. This year we've already got 32 people signed up to go. Big deal. You know, we've already got 32. So we have some more tickets. So if you want to, there's flyers. There's a table right outside on 
my left, and you can pick up a flyer or sign up if you want to go. Um, it's in April, um, and you can find out about the other things as far as uh, uh, how much it costs and the lodging and stuff like that. And if the Thrive thing isn't for you, I would suggest do other things. Maybe the Thrive's not for you. But go to the men's retreat, the women's retreat. There's lots of things. Just do what works for you and celebrate Christ, Christ working, working in you. So I, this whole day was supposed to be about rejoicing in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Be happy. Let people see what's happening inside of you. That's what one of the themes of Thrive is besides learning. You learn to have celebration. You should celebrate Christ more. Uh, people will... Are you more attracted to people that are joyful and celebrating life than those who are not? And so, uh, don't we attract people with the honey more than we do anything else? And so I think that if you want to have a ministry, be joyful. Can't do anything else? Be joyful. Because somebody will ask you, why are you so joyful? And you get a chance to tell them, okay? So, um, with that, um, I'm done with a Thrive portion of it, and I want to say that maybe there is a uh, uh, something that was said here this morning that might uh, have inspired you, because a lot of people are now, like I said, the one church they were baptizing 800 on one morning, a lot of people come because of the uh, um, joy that people are, are experiencing in, in, in giving, and so... We're going to have some people over here that are praying. If you want to give your life to Christ, I invite you to do that. This is the most exciting thing I can tell you. You need to hold on because you need to have a seatbelt when you are with Jesus because He does things for you that are amazing. Sometimes they come in the form of challenges. Okay? Those are a different kind of excitement. But sometimes they come in, in joyful things. So we're going to sing our, our final song. No, no, no.